Today's lesson is going to be on the chain rule, which is a way to find the derivative of a composition of functions. And what the rule says is that if you're taking the derivative of a function, f of u, that's going to equal the derivative of the function times the derivative of the inner function. So what that means is we're going to be given a function and we have to decompose it using a function decomposition, which is an activity we did last year in pre-calculus. It seems a little confusing probably, but if we look through a series of examples, I think you're going to find it to be pretty, pretty easy at first anyway. So our first function is y equals sine 2x. What I want to do with this, I want to think about it in terms of a broader sense, which is just y is equal to sine u. It's the sine of something. So the broader function would be the sine of u. Well, what are we taking the sine of? Well, that's going to be our u. We're going to let u equal 2x. And that's it, for starters. Looking at the next one, we've got this big binomial to the fourth power. But in general, in broader terms, what we have is we have something to the fourth power. So I'm going to say u to the fourth. And then over here, I'm going to let u equal the specific binomial, which would be 3x squared minus 5. OK. Going to example three, we've got the square root of this trinomial. Again, though, if we think in broader terms, it's just the square root of something. And then over here, we can define what that something is. And specifically, it is 3x squared minus x plus 1. OK, now with trig, Remember that when you square a trig function, you write it like this with the little squared symbol in between, but really it's the same thing as this. y equals tan x, that whole answer squared. And if you think about it like that, when we write it in a broader sense, it's going to be something squared. Well, what is the something? In this case, it is tan x. Okay, so hopefully you feel that this isn't so bad. Let's try a few more examples. They move pretty quickly. Uh, number five, y equals cosine 10x. In general, we have y is equal to the cosine of u. What specifically is u? Well, u is going to equal 10x. Okay. Number six, y equals the quantity 7x cubed plus 2 to the fifth. So in general, this is going to be something to the fifth power. And that specific something is going to be 7x cubed plus 2. And we're almost done here. Um, and number seven, the broader general function is the fourth root of something. Let's define what that something is. u is equal to 2x all over x minus 1. And finally, we're going to use that same trick that we used in number 4. This is something cubed. So we're going to say y equals u cubed for our outer function. And then we're going to define what that specific function u is, and we're going to call it secant x. Okay, so this is going to be our first process in using the chain rule, is understanding that it's a, the derivative of a composition of functions, and that there is an outer, broader function, and this inner, more specific function. In problem number two, we're going to use the chain rule to find the derivative of the expression y equals x squared plus 1 cubed. So using a process similar to the process we use in number 1, we're first going to write this using function decomposition. y is going to equal u cubed, and we're going to let u equal the specific inner function x squared plus 1. 
Now, according to the formula, to find the derivative of a function in u, it's going to be the derivative of that function, which would be y prime is equal to 3u squared. But then we have to multiply that by the derivative of the inner function u. So u prime, in this case, would be 2x. So overall, the derivative is going to be 3u squared times 2x. Now, we have to replace what u was in the first place. So that's defined over here. So we're going to write y prime is equal to 3 blank squared times 2x. And in the blank, it's going to go x squared plus 1 because that's what u is defined to be. Okay, and then we're just going to clean this up just a little bit and we'll be done. So this is going to be 6x times x squared plus 1 squared. So this is our answer using the chain rule. For our second example, they want us to do this problem here, but they want us to cube the binomial. So it's the same problem as number two, but they want us to have a different approach here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that y is equal to uh, x squared plus 1 times x squared plus 1 times x squared plus 1. So already this is becoming just a little annoying because we have to FOIL and all that stuff. So we're going to say x squared plus 1. Now we're going to FOIL these two together. So this is going to get me x to the fourth plus 2x squared plus 1. And now I'm going to multiply those out. Still working with the original function here. So we have x to the 6th plus 2x to the 4th plus x squared plus x to the 4th plus 2x squared plus 1. Still working with the original. We have x to the 6th plus, let's see, 3x to the 4th plus 3x squared plus 1. And now I'm ready to take the derivative. We get 6x to the fifth plus 12x cubed plus 6x. And I notice that I can take out um, a 6x out of all of those. When I do that, I'm left with x to the fourth plus 2x squared plus 1. And that can be factored. We end up getting 6x times x squared plus 1 squared. So the answer you can see is the same as the answer that we got using the, the chain rule. But this was just a lot more algebra intensive and quite frankly, annoying. So if you weren't sold on a reason to use the chain rule, hopefully this example has shown you the way.